Hi, good morning. Uh, this is going to be the fifth lecture on topology. But unlike the usual topology courses, and even in my book, usually I introduce continuity as soon as the necessary concepts are defined. The reason for that is 20th century mathematics understood the following principle. If I have an object with a mathematical structure, maybe groups, structure, ring structure, or uh, vector space structure, or topology, right? Then to understand that object with the additional structure, what you do is you look at the way it interacts with objects of a similar kind. If you want to understand a group G, I want to see how it interacts with G dash or G dash is some arbitrary group and similarly ring. If X is a topology space, then you want it to see how it interacts with other topology spaces Y. Now, what do I mean by interaction? Interaction depends on the context. If it is group theory, then it is not any map between G and G dash. Okay? You want a map which preserves the binary operation. And similarly for ring, then you want two binary operations to be preserved in due to And if it is two vector spaces, then you want the vector addition should be preserved as well as scalar multiplication should be preserved. Okay. Now, when it comes to topology, okay, topology is defined by means of open sets. So, when I want interaction between a map from f from x to y between to topological spaces, a very natural instinctive response may be yeah, f should preserve open sets. <laughs> right? But unfortunately, that is not the case. Okay, and so we will start with looking at the definition of continuity even in R and then metric spaces, then we will generalize to topological spaces and look at some examples. Next to two lectures are likely to be on continuity between topological spaces, right? Okay, with this preliminary, let us get started. Yeah. So let us look at if I have a function f from let us say R to R, maybe it is an open interval, open set, okay, I don't care. So, when do I say it's continuous at A in R? Then what do I do is I look at F of A and in analysis what you are given is you are given epsilon positive, therefore you form the interval F of A minus epsilon to F of A plus epsilon this interval. Then what do you do? Then you want to say there exists a delta so that this is you form the delta interval around A, notice that this is nothing other than B A delta, open ball with uh, center at A radius delta and whereas this is open ball center at A with radius epsilon. So what do I want? So this is F to F, this is a function, then what do I did is for every X here, okay, you give me any X here, then Fx should lie somewhere here, okay. This is geometric way of looking at, but in an analysis we write in a slightly different way. So I say F is continuous at A in R if for every epsilon positive, okay, there is a delta positive so that modulus X minus A less than delta implies mod F X minus F A is less than epsilon. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to interpret this analysis definition in terms of open sets. So, what does it say? If I have given epsilon, what I found was I formed the interval around F A with epsilon radius. Okay, therefore that means so given any B F A epsilon, any open ball around F A, that's all it means. Then what do I want to say? There exists an open ball B A delta. Right? So that what happens? For all x in B A delta, my f x belong to B F A epsilon. You see that we made it somewhat more topological and geometric. Do you understand this? If this is the first time you are looking at, please pause, review, and proceed. Notice that this immediately generalizes to two metric spaces. Why? 
because f is from let us say x d and to y d and remember I do not write it dx and dy context will make clear what distance I am talking about ok then if uh, a is a point in x when do I say f is continuous at a if for every epsilon positive there is a delta positive so that ok x belong to b a delta should imply f x belong to b f a epsilon let us have a picture so this is my y and this is my x ok what do I know so this is this is my f function from here to here so I am looking at a point a here then what I am looking at I am looking at a point f a here then what do I do I form an epsilon bar around this so this is b f a epsilon then what do I am assured I want to say there exists a delta bar around this so that what happens you start with an e x here then your fx should lie here ok so this is what happened this x goes to fx and that lies here yeah so p r p now how will I generalize this to the between topological spaces Okay, let me just make sure the recording is going on. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So suppose I have two topological spaces x and y tau y, right? I have a function f from x to y. Okay, this f is actually function from the set x to the set y, but there is a x as a topology tau is y as a topology tau y. Now let us fix a point a in x. I want to know if f is continuous at a. So how do I define? Now uh, I don't have metric, right? So I have, cannot talk about open bars. But then I know that area. What is important for topological spaces? Open sets, right? Therefore, so this open ball in the metric space can be replaced by open set. And here I similarly the open ball around A in S can be replaced by open set containing A, right? Do you follow that? So what? let us again have a picture so that things will be clear so I have x here and I have y here and this is my function f right I have x here ok so let us say a here and I have f a here then what do I know give me any open set u v in y ok then what I want to say there is an open set u containing a so that every x here ok then fx should also be here right this is what we did so this x goes to fx here so how will I formulate it a rigorous way now so I say f is continuous at a in x here for any given me any open set B in Y, this is same as saying B belong to tau Y with F of A should be in B. Then what do I want to know? I want to say I can find an open set U in X so that A belong to U and what happens? For every X in U, okay, F X should be in B this is see this this thing usually replaced by the following thing your pop your pop u is containing so it doesn't look very nice so let me write it this is same as saying your pop u is containing b but it's always good to go point wise okay it's easier okay so what i have to check you give me an x in the open set u right 
then I, the apex should lie here. Do all of you understand that? Okay, maybe I should have a bigger uh, cursor so that people can see that. Okay, where is that view? Okay, I do not know if six six seven uh, can uh, pencil cursor. Uh, now it will be clear. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, so you gave me a, then I form your p, then I take any open set. This is arbitrary. This v is arbitrary. Then what do I do? I should be able to find an open set U which contains A. With what property? Give me any X in U, then your effect should lie in B. Okay? Please go through the definition. Keep the picture in mind. Internalize. Don't try to memorize. Okay? Right? So it's a child's play to say that when F is continuous on x. What do I say? If this definition, this is the definition. Okay. If and only if f is continuous at every point a in x. Right? And those of you who had already studied topology, most of you will remember f is continuous on x, f and, if and only if for every open inverse image of every open set in B is open in X. Okay, that is a very easy to chant mantra, but uh, please learn this because in my experience, what I find is uh, many students are unable to define continuity at a point, even though they are able to say what, when it is continuous from a space to another space. Yeah, please learn that well. Okay, this is a very important thing. You will see, you we will use, keep using it. Is the definition okay? Right? Okay, so let us look at some simple examples. Okay, so let us look at some simple. The first example I am sure all of you know. Yeah? Whenever you talk about convergence of sequence, continuity of function, what is the first example your teacher or textbook will say? Come on, all of you know, this is a constant map. Yeah? So what does it mean to say constant map? That means there exists a Y naught in Y. So that what happens? Okay, for every X in X, okay, F X is, F maps X to Y naught. Yeah? So you can imagine the picture. Should I draw the picture? Okay, let me draw the picture X. And this is my y and this is my y naught so immaterial of what x you take whatever x you take all these flows will be mapped by the function f to the same point y naught right okay now i want to say f is continuous where i want to say f is continuous at say at a point a in x it's maybe arbitrary right now what should I do by according to my definition? I have to look at F A. What is F A? Why not? Next what should I do? I have to look for an open set B. Where? In Y. With what property? Y not should be in B. Then what I have to find? Okay. So this is my A. So I have to, okay, then I have to find an open set U. Okay? So that okay. So I have to find an open set U where in X. With what property? A must be a U and for every X in U, a perfect life must lie in B. Yeah? Now, what is F of X? Immaterial of any X you take, I know F of X is Y not. Okay? So, what kind of U I can take? Right? It does not matter. Whatever subset U you take containing X, okay? Sorry, containing A, take any set, any set, nothing to do with open or anything, right? So that A belong to this, then for every X here, FX will always be in B. You understand? Therefore, I only have to take some, take some open set which contains A. There is an obvious choice, namely, take U equal to X itself, right? You follow that? Yeah? Therefore, for every X here, what happens? FX is Y not. Therefore, that is in B. 
So what I have shown? I have shown is F is continuous. At where? At A index. What was A? A was arbitrary. Therefore, what I have shown? F is continuous at A for every A index. That means F is from X tau X to Y tau Y is continuous on X. Yeah? Do you understand the proof? Okay. Yeah? Okay, this is the first example as I said. What should be the second example? Yeah? Again, you will see the same pattern. Immaterial of what the branch of mathematics you are dealing with. Suppose I have B and W. Okay, yeah, the test size spaces, then a first linear map I will think of will be the constant zero linear map, right, for all x and b. And the second I will look at will be v to v itself identity map, x to v to x. And similarly for group, okay, what is the first map I will think of? f of g is u dash or u dash is the identity of g dash. The second example will be G to G, where F is the identity map. Yeah? You see that there is a pattern, right? In mathematics. Mathematics itself is an observation of patterns. Okay? And formulating, abstracting them as the theorems. Okay. Now let's come back. So what is the obvious question you should ask? So let F be the identity map. From where to where? F to apply it is X tau X to X tau X. Right? The domain and codomain are the same topological space. So I want to know whether F is continuous. So fix an A in X. Okay, then what do I have? I have this is my X. This is my X. I just have to draw it they, as they look similar. They may or may not be. This is my F. So if I have a point A, I have a point A. What is F of A? F of A is A. Then what am I supposed to look at? I have to look at an open set V. Right? Okay. Now V is an open set, right? V belongs to tau X. Now what I have to find? I have to find an open set U containing A. What is the obvious choice? Remember, for every X in U, FX will be X, X has to be in V. You understand that? FX is X, that has to be in V. What does it mean? For every X in U, just Try to under, you see, it's easy to write such proofs easily, but you know, I want you to think. Suppose x is in u, what is fx? That is x. Therefore, what should happen if such a u is there, then for every x in u, x is in v. That means u must be v. Do you follow that? And u must be open. So take any open subset such that a belongs to u and u is contained in v. In particular, I can take u equal to v itself. Usually the teacher will say take u equal to v and it's obvious. But you should analyze. What should what did I analyze? Suppose such a u I am working backwards. So suppose such an open set u exists containing a so that for every x in u fx belong to v. Then I want to understand what is u. What kind of u will solve that problem? Have the property. So, if x belongs to you, then fx is x, that means x is in v. That is, for every x in u, x must be in v. That is, same as saying u must be a subset of v. But I want it to be u open, and it also must contain a. Therefore, what should I look for? u must be an open subset of v containing a. What is the obvious choice for such a u? u equal to v. Do, do you understand this kind of analysis? See, it's beautiful to think mathematics. And you, Otherwise, this thing is take u equal to v and verify f of, f of u is contained in v. This is what, this is a verification. Whereas, we discovered how to find, how to analyze. Because in more general case, this is the kind of question you should learn to ask so that you can find such a u. You understand? If u is given, you simply verify. But you, and in many cases, you have to find, okay, investigate which u is going to have the will satisfy your work, will have, will, you know, satisfy your criterion, will do the job. So this is the kind of analysis you have to learn.
that's why even though it's such a trivial thing in both the cases within one minute or two minutes the teacher would have disposed of i took a lot of time for this reason i hope you appreciate that yeah p a p okay now there is a th very third question i can ask but i think i will wait okay see now i have a set x right and as i said the identity map is you know, any map is from set to set a topology or binary operation and two binary operations or scalar multiplication vector addition nothing matters you understand that what all i need is to define a map i need a set to set all right now if you are very curious you can think of suppose x is a set but tau 1 is a topology on x tau 2 is another topology on x there are two different topologies right like we have seen discrete and indiscrete right or countable and co sorry co finite and co countable okay there could be different topologies right so i can ask the identity map from x tau 1 to x tau 2 i can ask when it is continuous are you excited about that question i will come to that at the end okay i don't want to okay so curious what are we curious about let tau 1 tau 2 be topologies on x then let's look at the identity map from x tau 2 to x tau 1 okay when is this continuous right i do not know whether it's continuous if, okay assume that it's continuous i want arithmetic condition do you understand that okay we will attend to this later what person i'm worried okay i do not know yeah <laughs> Okay, what is the third example now? Third example is, suppose yes, and this is tau d, where tau d is a discrete metric, sorry, discrete uh, topology. And y, tau y, be any space. Yeah? And again, f from x tau d to y tau y be any map okay fix a point a in x i want to know whether it is continuous at here so what are we taking we are taking in the domain a discrete space what do i mean by discrete space is a set with a discrete topology and codomain could be anything any topology space i don't know and what if i am taking doesn't matter any map i want to know this continuous so let us think about it okay so i have a y here and i have f of a and i have x here and remember each in this each singleton is open every subset is open right so let me take this a this is my a right and what do i have i have a function f i want to know the f is continuous at a so what i am given I am given A, then I form F A, then what do I have to do? I have to find an open set V. Right? So, so not I have to find, I am given an open set V containing F A. What I have to find now? I have to find an open set U containing A. So that what happens? For every X in U, Fx must lie in V. Right? That there exists such a U. Right? Now this is where, do you remember I kept insisting from the first one or two lectures in the exams of topology spaces, the, after defining topology, what is the first question I always ask, given a point, what are the simplest, smallest or uh, what you call typical open sets containing that point. Do you remember that? I kept on insisting, learn that well, that will be useful. Now I have given A as an element in a discrete space what is the simplest open set containing a a all of you know that right take u equal to singleton x itself so a singleton a itself 
yeah this must cut in a right is this an open set this belong to tau of d right and give me any x but there's only one x namely a where does it belong to it belong to b so what is it i have concluded therefore and i know f of a belong to b therefore f of u is a sustra b that means f is continuous at a in x since a is arbitrary we conclude f is continuous at on x tau d the discrete matrix yeah are you happy with this you see that every time what i am asking i am asking you a question how to find a u okay we are not simply saying take this as u and verify f of u is continuous we are not doing we always want to find u by ourselves nobody has to tell us what it is we know how to find it okay have you understood this and go through this what is something interesting look at that is it it amazing you do not know what is the code of mind as a space it could be anything okay then i am i am restricting my class of functions from the discrete space to the code of mind no it could be any map then what i have concluded every such map is continuous you see that in that way discrete topology is the most most linear person <laughs> okay any map from discrete space to any other space is always going to be continuous something fantastic okay go through this pause review and proceed if you go on through this what is the natural thing you should ask i looked at the discrete topology and tried to ask what do you think i should ask there are two questions that i can ask whether i can replace discrete topology by discrete topology in the domain or if you have much better instinct intuition you may think what do you think whether i should take in discrete topology has the codomain space are you following is the question clear think about it's fun so suppose x and i have in discrete okay let me simply write i i for in discrete right to y this i to y to y okay i want to know that it's going to be open okay this is going to be continuous at any a right just want to i want to check for fun okay so i go fast this is a this is f a okay i take any open set right and suppose f is not constant or something right now whatever open set you gave me the only open set which contains a is all of x do you understand that yeah so i want f x to be contained in open set and v was arbitrary you understood that so there is a possibility if i find i want you to think okay usually people do not discuss such thing you should think suppose i have a y which is not in v this is my v and suppose i have a y which is not in v and such that okay y is also in the image of v that is there is an x so that this x goes to y you follow that yeah suppose such a possibility exists then i am in trouble yeah why because the only open set containing a is all of x therefore for every x in capital x something should happen if i take this x that goes to y that y is not in v right so it may not be continuous so this may not be a good question to ask do you understand this so we should think again you should find an alternative question what is the alternative question alternative question is start with any topology space but the code of mine i keep it to be in discrete topology have you understood 
now let f be any function okay right now what is the question i want to ask whether this is continuous at some point a in x okay now let's look at fp i don't want to draw picture you should have in mind now let's take an open set v in tau i containing fp then tau i has only two open sets what are they this and y there the and fp is an element therefore it has to be in y you understand that yeah therefore the only open set containing fp is y right then what do i have to do i have to find an open set u in tau x and such so that a belong to u and f of u is contained in b but that's very easy right because for any subset a of x f of a is always a subset of b because that's equal to y right so what you will choose an obvious choice u must be an also be open set you should contain a Therefore, I take u equal to x. You follow that? Because f of x is contained in b. Are you following? Yeah. So let us compare and contrast. In the first case, it was x with tau discrete topology and y arbitrary, and the other one was x tau x here arbitrary, but this was y. tau in discrete okay now what did i find no matter what function you gave me f and g are continuous have you understood yeah yeah pause review proceed this is the fourth example this example fourth example leaves you an obvious question what did i find i said that if x is a discrete space any function from x to any space is continuous right so what is the natural question you could like you would like to ask let me repeat x is a discrete space any function f from the discrete space x to any space y is continuous what is the next question you would like to ask obvious you are you will ask for whether the converse is true what does it mean suppose x is a space so that any function f from x to any space y is continuous can i conclude x is discrete do you understand the question x is some space given to me with what property no matter what function f you give me from x to whatever space y you want okay let y be any space take any function f from x to y i know it is continuous then what do i want to know whether x is discrete do you have analogous square question for the second case what did we prove if y has indiscrete y is indiscrete space there is a function from any arbitrary space x to y is continuous therefore what is the converse question i can ask suppose y is a space so that if g is any function from some space x to y g is continuous then can i conclude y is indiscrete please think about this questions i am not writing so i want you if you necessary you rewind the video watch it so i am going to solve one of them the other one i will leave to you so let x be a space so that for every f from x okay maybe if you call it x tau x tau to y tau y is continuous so let x tau be a space so that any map here from x tau to y tau y is continuous for every space y tau y okay then quest then tau is a discrete topology this is a question 
ये स्टाउ दैट डिस्क्रिप्ट टू पॉलिजेनिक्स डू यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस क्वेश्चन ओके आई लीव द सेकंड क्वेश्चन टू यू बिकॉज द प्रूफ्स आर द सेम बिकॉज आई वांट टू टेल यू सम ट्रेड सीक्रेट व्हिच यू नो इन ऑल माय कोर्सेज आई हैव ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेंड मेनी टाइम्स बट इट्स वर्थ रिपीटिंग बिकॉज स्टूडेंट्स वेरी रेयरली रियलाइज ऑफ कोर्स टीचर्स इन टेक्स्ट बुक डू नॉट से दैट सो व्हाट इज द हाइपोथेसिस हाइपोथेसिस सेड एक्स टाउ इज गिवन देन for every space y and here for every function y okay the function f from x tau to y tau y is continuous then what do i am I supposed to conclude i want to conclude whether the tau is the discrete topology right the trait secret is when the hypothesis says okay for each something happens for every some okay something happens okay there is a universal quantity pair For all blah blah blah, something happened. In the proof, you have to make a choice. You cannot say, okay, for all something happened, therefore nothing. You have to make a special. I will just give this thing, so, okay, to have an idea. Suppose for all x in x, okay, x has some some property p. Okay, you, I want to make use of this hypothesis. That means in the proof, then I have to find a suitable x. And apply the hypothesis. Then conclude X S P, and hence some result follows. This is way abstract. I know that. Okay, but don't worry. We are going to see that. And if you watch my foundation course and analysis course and the various other things, you would have learned this trick. Okay, let us do that. So what I know, I have given X top. Then for every Y top Y. Okay, and for every up, this is continuous, right? So there are two every. What is that? Y tau y. So you take any for each and every space y. Something happen. Then I have to make a choice of this y. Now x is given to me, and I want to find some y. Where do you think I will find? Obvious thing is take f y equal to the set x itself. Right? Right. But now that I have x and y, y equal to x, then I have to choose for every f something happens. What is the obvious choice of f for me? Again, I make a smart choice. I take f equal to identity, right? But remember, so I have fixed the set y, I fix the function f, but then I am supposed to take the topology, right? That is not fixed because this is supposed to be every space. Therefore, the topology must be fixed. So, what kind of topology I will take? What do I want to prove? I want to prove tau is a discrete topology, right? Therefore, what kind of tau y I should take? Can you guess? I take tau y equal to tau discrete. The discrete topology on X. The more y is X now. Do you understand? Therefore, what do I know now? I know identity map from x tau to the same x with the tau discrete this is continuous that is my hypothesis because i made a special choice of space i also made a special choice of yeah do you understand what i wrote here okay this is a, okay golden remark okay remember this I should have put in yellow because it's a gold, right? <laughs> anyway, right? So therefore, by hypothesis, in particular for this choice of space x tau d, and for this particular choice of function, namely identity function, that should be continuous, right? And now I want to conclude. Yes, right? Okay. How will I conclude? Yeah, I want to conclude. Therefore, from this, I want to conclude tau equal to tau d. Can I conclude? Okay, I conclude it easily, but I want to take a digression. So pause, review, proceed. This kind of analysis is never done. Okay, It's just. Don't worry about whether you can recall this proof. Please don't do that. 
always try to think along with me learn how to think and review once or twice you will see that it becomes part of you you know how to think on your own you don't have to remember your brain will think ahead of you okay please do that okay so i will stop this question but i will go to prove the standard result the standard result okay this is a mantra this is a standard mantra suppose f from x tau x to y tau y is can okay is given okay given okay then f is continuous if and only if for every open set b in y the inverse set the inverse image namely set of all x in capital x such that f x belong to b this is belong is open in x and okay a kind of advice i know that many of you will just look at this definition leave it but this is a very important definition the set theory definition of inverse images so look at my foundation course videos and learn inverse images very thoroughly okay many teachers do not spend on this and uh, but this concept of inverse image is very very important for modern mathematics so learn that okay how it be the important thing is it behaves well with respect to set theoretic operations okay these are all explained there please please go through that okay right now come back right so i'll prove one way if f is continuous if inverse b is open i will stop here because we will be reaching the time limit so let us assume prove let me assume your piece continuous okay let b in tau y be given i want to show f inverse b is s of sort of x is continuous sorry open in x that is this object belong to tau of x yeah right okay now again so i have to increase it to something like 32 pages i believe okay let me just take a second thing let me say this Okay, so what I want to do is f from x x tau x to y tau y continuous b is in tau y. I want to prove your inverse b is in tau x. Now this is a trade secret which I had already explained in the first few lectures. trade secret what is the trade secret so the trade secret is let me write it suppose i want to say u is a subset of x and i want to say u is open of course this is a space x tau okay yeah. this is a topological space u is some subset i want to say u is open what is the trick the trade secret is you try to find for each x in x okay find you yeah, call it a u x in tau and open set so that what happens x is in u x and and u x is contained in u well, let me repeat so i have u this is my u what do i do for each x then i find a u x okay yeah. so this is an open set And so that x belong to u x, u x is contained in u, right? 
so does this remind you of something remember when we define open sets in the matrix space how did you define i said u is open u for each x in u i can find an open ball so that x belong to bx and bx is contained in u and you had already seen bx r is an open set right therefore x belong to b ux and ux is contained in u that's how you define do you see more remember that it is exactly that now you may think it looks like a very uh, trite statement okay that only shows you, okay you are not been exposed to the its significance all right why it's very interesting is now do you remember so you gave me x in u what i am supposed to find i have to find a ux so that x belong to ux and ux is contain u now do you remember my golden rule given x then what do what question should i ask what are the typical or simplest or smallest open set ux which contains x then among them i have to find choose a ux which contain in u do you understand that so you will see how many times i am using uh, yet another trade secret or golden rule which i told you okay let's come back so i want to show okay this u which is f inverse of v that is f inverse of v this is by definition x in capital x so that fx is in v i want to say this is open in x so what should i do start with any x here may call it a start with any a here right then what do i know my function f is continuous at a because f is continuous on x therefore f is continuous at a therefore okay this is my y and you gave me a f a right okay you follow that no no i will not say yeah let me just uh, sorry let me just uh, go back let me what i am given now you gave me an open set okay call this one open set this is open set b right then what did i find and this is my x and this may be my f inverse f inverse may not be single piece it may be lot of pieces let me take a a this these are these are the things all these things constitute f inverse of b which is u i start with a u a right so a belong to f inverse of b what is the meaning that means f a belong to b you understand that therefore your p a is here right now let's go back what do i know about f f is f is continuous at a and this b is an open set containing f a therefore what do i know i know since f is f is continuous at a and f a belong to b therefore there is an open set call it ua where in x so that a belong to ua and f of ua is contained in b this is the def by definition continuity what does this mean this means for every x in ua f x is in b okay i am just a equality of these two right they are equivalent statement right now what does it say about u a okay can u a be something like this can this be u a because not now let's look at x x is in u u a and f x is in b that means x is in f inverse of b right this implies this is b right therefore give me any x in u a that x is in f inverse of b that means what u a is contained in f inverse of b yeah so what do you think i have proved i have proved that for every a in f inverse of b i have found an open set u a so that a belong to u a and u a is contained in f inverse of b 
right therefore my set f inverse of v is the union of as a varies over f inverse of v that is u is equal to f inverse of v okay this is our definition right this is u a now what are u a u a s are open in x therefore union of open sets is open in x that means u is open in x have i proved okay so i have proved that for every v open in y f inverse v is open in x okay pause the view proceed so in the next lecture so in the next lecture i will complete the state uh, converse statement i will prove the converse no i hope all of you enjoy okay most often they just immediately quickly do this mantra and they can just one or two results okay composition of continuous functions continuous etc etc they would like to prove but you see that we will have lot more examples so that okay you know how to deal with continuous maps between topological spaces i hope you enjoy it okay take care stay safe we'll meet again